And we're coming to you live from Build 2019. And with me, I have my good friend, Maria Nagaga. How are you doing, Maria? I'm good, Cecil. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. I have a little bit of a sore throat, but we're going we're gonna to work through it, though. We're not going to have any problems. All right. I hope you feel better soon. Sure. No problem. Like, I'm just going to lean on you a little bit to do some more of the talking. But um, so tell us, what do you have to show us today? Oh, absolutely. Today, I want to show you Try.net, okay. which is a document, interactive documentation generator for .NET Core documentation. So um, if you think about if you, develop, if you see any developer documentation today, whether it's JavaScript, Python, Scala, there's always this interactive experience where users can run the code right within the browser. Mm -hmm. So before, .NET had nothing like that. Like sure. if you're just like, I want to build a Hello World application in .NET, we're like, get Visual Studio and see you tomorrow. Right? Yeah, like there's all these things we have to set up, like Visual Studio, we got to download .NET, and then we got to configure all our tools together. Yeah, and, and Visual Studio, when we um, open source.net and we made it cross-platform, mm -hmm. that was the first step, okay. right? But if you just want to write a Hello World or understand the fundamentals of the language, you need to just get up and running. You didn't need to care about what using statements were or namespaces. You just needed to get right inside the code. Yeah. So two years ago, we collaborated with the documentation team, so docs.microsoft.com, to create interactive documentation. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to showcase something on my screen right now. Cool. That sounds good. So once my screen has loaded up, um, this is docs.microsoft.com. And this is a console application. I can hit Run. I see the results. And I can edit it and see the results again. And when we did put this up on the docs page, we saw increased um, customer satisfaction, where it went up by 20%. Sure. So it was a huge thing for us that our customers really like this. Mm -hmm. So we worked on it more. We were running completely on Azure Container instances. Okay. And then we wanted to make a bit of a switch. How come? Um, one, the expense. Oh, got it. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. And also, we wanted to open source it and allow for multiple people to use it. And you didn't have to occur the cost of just trying to run an interactive .NET application. Sure, because that would make it just a little bit more portable, right? Like anybody could just download it and get it and just, just start working with just it. Just start working on it. So you don't need to know anything about containers or Azure. Sure. All you need to worry about is like, can I make this code run right, on my right. website? Mm -hmm. So in order to achieve this, when Blazor came out, we're just like, we could take advantage of that. Right. So if we go under the hood right now, I'm going to go over to Domain Developer Tools. I try not to use shortcuts when I'm on stage because people are like, what did she just press? She's right? going too fast. She's like, going what too is fast. this? Um, and if you look over in console, you'll yeah. notice that we have WebAssembly initialized. Yeah. So this shows that we're completely running on the client side. So there's no compilation that's happening on the server side. Uh, there's, no, there's no back end communication or anything. 100% inside of the browser. Yes, and I can prove that to you. OK. So if we go over to the Network tab, I'm going to refresh this page. And you're going to see all the stuff coming down. And look at all the different assemblies that get pulled down with the package. So this is all running in your browser. And that was it's huge cool. for us, right? So when I showed this at Build on Monday, we got a few applause. And I was hoping to hear the audience <laughs> just like clap just a little. So I'll clap for myself. OK, OK. Yeah, okay, or okay. you can clap at home. Yeah. Please do. I'll clap for you. Thank you. <laughs> so that was the start, right? So yeah. interactive documentation is one thing. Mm -hmm. But you do a lot of workshops, right? Yeah, we do a lot of workshops. We do a lot of mentoring, like a lot of teaching for different people and things like that. So when you do a workshop, there are a couple of things, right? So you go to a workshop. You typically host them at a conference. Sure. And with conference Wi-Fi, getting everything up and running can take up to 30 minutes because you need yeah. an editor. You need the SDK. You need everything that you need. Right? Yeah, setup is usually a nightmare, right? Because you're, like, you're coming in with your machine. Yeah. Like, and everybody has different operating systems, Windows, Linux, Mac. You know what I mean? Like, we have to have the same tools installed, have them configured, and have them ready to go. Exactly. So. What we decided to do was imagine if you could be successful with just the repo where your workshop is okay. and the .NET Core SDK and a global tool called .NET Try. That's interesting. So I'm going to show you what that magic does right okay. now. Okay, let's take a look. All right, so let's see if I, yeah. There we go. So I'm over in my command line, mm -hmm. and I've already installed the .NET Global tool, and I've already installed .NET Core, and I've got the repo. 
So I'm going to type .NET Try, which is a global tool that we have. And what this is going to do, it's going to launch the browser. And if you look at the top, you notice that this is readme.md. So you're, you're hosting markdown files? Yes. OK. That's We're hosting markdown files. I am going into this. I can run the code. And this is all happening locally on my machine. So, so hold on one second. So you're hosting this markdown file. And then you're writing code in the Markdown file yep. in the browser. Yep. And it's all happening with no server-side compilation at all. Like, nope. It's all happening locally on your machine. So technically oh. here, we're using your browser as the editor. So okay. someone can grow up into an editor, mm -hmm. or while they are getting the workshop up and running and they're installing the tools, they can actually work with it. And once VS Code or Visual Studio is download, downloaded, you can transition over. Sure. I mean, so like we said before, like this would be really great for workshops yeah. because the setup time that usually takes a long time, like that'll completely cut it down. Yep. But I even think about with students, right? Like, like we think about educators and, and, and students that are just teaching classes or, you know, sometimes like, you know, I'll create, you know, file new application, right? And I have yeah. console application number 85, right? Because mm -hmm. I've done it so many times. <laughs> yeah. Now I could just spin up try.net and start prototyping and trying out things really quickly. Yeah. And just to, check and see if it works. And if I wanted to, I could copy it back over into Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, and I could just you know, keep going. You don't even need to copy it back into Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. No? You just need to open your project up in Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. What? So I'm going to show you this. Okay. So here I am in VS Code. And this looks like any other, let me start with a markdown. OK. So this looks like markdown that any single person who has written content before has done, right? So if you look at the code fences over on line five, we have a block of code, and we have the C-sharp indicator. But if you've noticed that we've added additional options, we have the region option, the source file option, and the project option. What the region option is doing is that it's pointing to a region in your backing project okay. in your program.cs file. I'm going to go over here. We have a region called method. And we're pulling the code directly from here, and we're accessing it in your markdown. So you have your backing project being the source of truth. This is crazy. So like, it's, like, it's like we extended markdown yes. to understand C Sharp. Try and then now like, we've connected it to this program.cs file. Yeah. That's so, really cool. and, and I can prove this. OK. So let's go over here. Let's change this to build. Mm -hmm. Let's save this. Let's go back to our terminal, which I think the application is still running. Did I save it? Yeah. We'll know in a bit. If not, I'll just go back. And it was in methods. It switched to build. That's amazing. All right. And we also offer the opportunity, because we want people to be able to explore the language as well and the method, just sure. that they would do in a regular editor. Okay. So dot to, and we get IntelliSense as well. We have IntelliSense. We have IntelliSense. Wow. And one thing that you're noticing is that even though my backing project is a project, is a sort code of truth, I have the flexibility to explore the language. I'm not bound to the backing project. Sure, I can sure, sure, sure. explore methods. I can explore different experiences. And, and what I like about the fact that you're using Markdown means that like, if I wanted to, like, I could create my own workshop read, written in Markdown, and then I could put it up on GitHub somewhere, or I can make that a part of my coursework material. Yeah. And then I could just have my samples right there in the browser. Yes. So it's a really interesting interesting experience, right? Because you now I could read the code and write the code and run it in the same place. I don't have to be jumping back and forth to different places. No, we've truly made an interactive documentation for coding. Like okay. you are, it's like reading a book, yeah. but you're able to just write the code at the same time. Right, OK, OK. So, so here's another question for you. Yeah. So you're running this in a web browser right now. Yeah. So could I run this like in a blog post, or if I wrote an article online or something like that? You absolutely can. So okay. we are and we're actually still working on that experience right now. Okay. But we are introducing a .NET Try publish step mm -hmm. where we will actually get your markdown and spin up a whole bunch of HTML and JavaScript that you can just go and place into your blog. And okay. that should be coming in the next couple of months. Okay. And the .NET Try global tool will be ready um, by the end of the week. So people can start experimenting with this on Friday. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about how, how do I get this? How do I install it? 
What do I need on my machine? Like, how do I get going with this thing? OK, so all you need on your machine is a .NET Core SDK okay. and the .NET Tri Global tool. And you're good to go. And the, your repo. So if you have a repo with your markdown and your backing project, you just need to add the regions, add the options, and you're good to go. I'm pretty sure you can get this up and running in under 30 minutes. That's amazing. Do we have any like, you know, pre-written samples or anything that people could try out right now that Absolutely. they could just download? Absolutely. So one of the pre-written samples, and if, if you go to uh, our GitHub repo, uh, .NET slash try, okay. we have a bunch of samples that people can start working with. Mm -hmm. We have samples that showcase C Sharp 8. We have samples for beginners. We have mathematical samples. I'm currently working on an ASP.NET Core sample. Oh, really? So we'll have yes. a bunch of samples that people can start trying out. But before we head out, I have one last surprise that we're hoping to get people's surprise. feedback on. OK. All right, so I talked about .NET Try from a learning perspective and a documentation perspective. One of the big things is, how could I use this in my everyday life as a developer? So we're working on an experiment with NuGet.org. It is an experiment. We are looking for feedback, where imagine if you want to try a new uh, NuGet package, you have to either install it into your existing code base or create a throwaway project, right? Yeah. What if you could just try it all in the browser? Like on NuGet? Yeah. Like on NuGet.org? On NuGet.org. So okay. imagine if you could do that. So this is an experience. It's it's not out yet. This could be months away. It could even be a year away. But we want people to be able to run NuGet packages and test them out mm. right within the browser. Um, this could evolve to something that could be a playground. But we're looking for feedback. If you have any feedback, .NET try, please come and give us feedback on our issues. We're looking to grow this. So we're looking forward to everyone giving it a try. Awesome. This is amazing, Maria. I'm so excited to try this out. So definitely thank you for coming on and, and showing this to us. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And now we just learned about how you could try .NET with Retry.NET. Now, we're about halfway through the last day of build, and we're sending you off to a break session on how to bring your VMware applications to Azure with Mark Hain. Then we'll be back here with all of the details about how you can manage your data goals. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you so much. Thank you.